the uh, the ABCs. Uh, in June of 2018, the Supreme Court upheld Trump's Muslim ban. Uh, Do you legislation to rescind the Muslim ban? <laughs> yes, it's uh, HR 810, and I am uh, on that bill with Katie. That's a lie. The muzzle ban is causing unneeded heartache for American citizens. Uh, American citizens who have families abroad, who live in other countries, in these countries subjected to the muzzle ban, who can't even come over here for a wedding or for the birth of a grandchild. This is not the America we want. We want to make sure our country Obama is safe, did the our same borders thing. are safe, our courts are safe, our children are safe, and our families are safe. But we do that the right way. And we take care of our American citizens and allow their families to come visit. And we need to overturn the Muslim ban. Yes. And then I am also a co-sponsor of Representative Chu's HR, um, HR 810 bill. Um, I've also co-sponsored co Representative Byer's bill, um, which would ban religious discrimination in our immigration system. And I will say that our country has a history here, and it's not one that I am proud of. And so I think when you look back at the ways that our immigration system has somehow kind of engaged in outright discrimination and bigotry toward those based on religion. This is not something that we should be repeating. Um, I've also just recently decided to co-sponsor another bill from our colleague Judy Chu, um, and this bill is similar, it kind of combines the two bills. It both reverses the Muslim ban um, in all of its different forms that it's been tried. It also bans religious um, discrimination in our immigration system, and it also would require the president, whoever he or she may be going forward, to meet a, a stringent standard when they take immigration activity to make sure it's not being done on the basis of unlawful um, reasons, such as freedom of um, expression or freedom of practice of religion. So we, our president has great immigration authority, great power over immigration that is part of our constitutional structure, but we in Congress also have a duty to make sure that the exercise of that authority isn't violating other core principles of our Bill of Rights, including the right to be free to worship um, whatever you believe. So um, that's what I the next question says, the current administration has demonized immigrants and refugees coming to our country to better their lives. Is a wall on the border a real solution to the imagined problem of immigrants stealing jobs and bringing crime? Carly. When I talk to you a little bit about Senate Bill 744, I should talk about what was in that bill. That bill provided $46 billion for border port security. That border port security was not a wall going down the Rio Grande uh, for a lot of reasons. One, because it's a bad idea. Why? Two, it would trample the property rights of Americans who own the land. Uh, just imagine the process of getting the domain. domain to even go through that. Uh, and third, it's ineffective. So the $46 billion for border and port security was to be uh, addressed with the Army Corps of Engineers who are the experts in how to make sure that we have secure borders and ports. In addition to the borders and, and port security, and we should point out port security is not just shipping ports or ports on, on the border, it's also our airports. Because half of the undocumented individuals in America came through airports, half of them. So 40. when we talk about a wall, we know it absolutely doesn't work uh, to build a wall from sea to sea. <laughs> what we do know that works is making sure that we rely on the experts, because we do need secure borders, we do need secure ports. And, and towards that end, we need to make sure that we're using today's technologies and, and systems and ability to make sure that we can have that outcome. And I should also point out that that same legislation uh, 
uh, Senate Bill 744, heading pathway for citizenship uh, for Dreamers for DACA. Uh, it also provided revisions to our visa system so that those, unfortunately, we have a lot of people who come to the U.S., get a great education, uh, start businesses, and two or three years later, they have to leave. And the idea is with the visa uh, revisions that we would help those who are coming to our country to create businesses and jobs that we'd like to keep them here, which is a great idea. <laughs> so hopefully we can get back to that. And, and my, my biggest frustration is, and I, and I touched this earlier, we've got to get rid of the rhetoric. Um, the rhetoric of build the wall, Mexico's going to pay for it, is getting in the way of getting things done. <laughs> I'm going to disagree. Thank you. Who believes in open borders? That's just unadulterated BS. Right. So, but you do. Let's work together. Let's make sure we have safe, secure borders and ports. Let's make sure we have a pathway to citizenship for Dreamers and DACA. And let's make sure that we are no creating jobs here. No more bullshit. Build the That would be the rhetoric I would be speaking of. <laughs> 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 before I just go over the so I know you mentioned as far as um, uh, technology with one measure, and the other question is what security guys if they need support? I know you mentioned technology and one other than the others. Well, from a technology standpoint, obviously some of the things that we discussed are uh, motion detectors, um, infrared uh, detectors, drones, um, uh, uh, posting along the the, uh, the border that allows those electronic systems to be tied together to help monitor uh, uh, the, the border. But actually, more important than that are the ports of engine. And uh, you know, I'm just going to take one second. We, if we, if we want to get into the humanitarian crisis that is hitting uh, our border, we can get into that. But prior to the recent humanitarian crisis and in, in, uh, in, uh, attempted immigration at our southern border, there's three things you need to understand. Prior to that, we were at a 20-year low as far as uh, crossing into the United States. And, uh, and, and second, we talk a lot about the reason we need border security is to interdict illegal drugs. 85% of the illegal drugs that come into the United States come in through ports of entry, not through the open border. And that's uh, information, by the way, from the White House. Uh, so 85% uh, and 85% of that 85% that comes in, we only interdict approximately 20, 25% best case uh, situation. So we want to stop uh, fentanyl and other drugs coming into the United States. Yes, we should have border port security, but let's emphasize port security because that's where the vast majority of drugs are coming in. The <laughs> suggested as, as to what we need to address is the uh, those with terrorist ties coming into the United States. Uh, in 2017, our 2018 numbers began. This information is from the White House. Uh, it was just shy of 4,000 people were stopped from coming into our country with suggested terrorist ties. Right. All but 47 of them were in foreign airports trying to come to the United States. 47. Thank you. And of the 47 that were stopped at the border, 41 of them were in the Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. Reports, but we need to have the right discussion based on the right facts so we can get to the right outcomes. Yeah. Every strong country needs strong borders. And I've been able to travel around the world, including to places like Myanmar, and see firsthand what having no effective border security and no border security at all for some of our nations in crisis means. That is not who we are as a country. We need strong borders where people have a fair chance 
to apply for admission to this country and be treated according to both international and domestic rule of law. We don't, we must do the work at our ports of entry that Harley was talking about. We do not, we must crack down on things like illegal drugs, adulterated goods, counterfeit goods, weapons. This is what border security is about. And border security is about evaluating anybody who comes to our border and who tries to enter. So we need to do that work. And what Harley said, I'll just echo what Harley said about illegal drugs coming through vehicles at our existing heavily monitored ports of entry is right. So there's scanning technology, you mentioned infrared technology, there's a need, we have 3,000 unfilled customs jobs in this country right now. And so we need to provide the resources to fill those jobs and ensure that we have trained people who want to do that work. The solution here though is investing in the technology that matters. Human trafficking yep. is a very real problem yep. in French County. Yes. Nationally, I'm sorry to tell you that we are one of the centers of human trafficking. Yep. The vast majority of that human trafficking occurs at our airports, in places like John Wayne. So one of the things that we could do is to invest in resources and tools. It's as simple as things in bathrooms that warn people if you are being trafficked, here is what to do in different languages. So we do have legitimate issues that we need to be concerned about with both the people and the goods that are coming into our country. But a wall from sea to sea is not going to help us with our challenges of climate change. There are places along our southern and northern border where some kind of fencing and physical barrier is appropriate. And we have that now, partly because it's simply unsafe for anyone to be crossing at that point. The terrain makes it dangerous. So we have provided the president at the time he was shutting down the government and leaving federal workers unpaid and letting their children go hungry. Oh, the president please. has authorized but unspent funds that he could have been using to address these places where physical barriers are helpful and appropriate and are widely supported as necessary. And we have authorized additional funding in that reopening of the government. So if the president would like to continue to examine where physical borders are working and where they're not, what kinds of physical borders are saving the lives of those who may be trying to enter this country, and are stopping illicit goods, I have no problem with that. But this idea of a, of a wall to satisfy someone's ego rather than to keep us as safe is an abuse of power. 